Hey, all right, let's let's do this problem seven, all right? So this is a like problem seven that you may or may not get and see a problem like or exactly like this. So simplify the square root of a whole number greater than 100. Well, you've got the square root of 188. I'm gonna make this bigger here. I forgot that the red was still on, but that's okay, we can change that. So let's factor that, all right? So let's figure out what we can pull out of 188. So, you know, on when I first think about this, I'm like, uh, okay, well, I think I can probably get four out of that. So let's start with four and see if we can. So that would be 16, 28, seven. So I can get four factors out to four times 47. All right, if I did that correctly, which I believe I did. And as far as I know, 47 is a prime number. And if it's a prime number, that means you're not going to get anything out of it, especially like a square number. So you're going to get nothing out of it other than 1 of 47. So break that up into square root of 4 times the square root of 47. Square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 47. So sometimes these will break down really nicely and sometimes they don't break down so nicely and that's okay. It's just a matter of always, I usually start with the lower ones. So usually if you start with like four or nine um, and try those, you'll usually get something. A good way to check if something is divisible by nine is to add all the numbers up. Here, let me do this in a different color is to take 1 plus 8 plus 8. So if you did that, 1 plus 8 plus 8 is 17. And if a number is divisible by 9, when you add all its digits up, that will also, the sum of that will also be divisible by 9. And 17 is not divisible by 9. So 188 is not divisible by 9. So that's just a quick trick of how to check if something's divisible by nine. You can do the same thing with three as well, but three doesn't really help us with these types of problems. Okay, moving on. Square root addition or subtraction with three terms. All right, we like these. Okay, so with these, pretty much what you're gonna try to do is get the radical, the, the radicand, the same on all of these. So I'm looking at two times the square root of five, and that's pretty simplified. 3 times the square root of 45, I can bust that up into 3 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 9 because I know 9 is a square number I can pull out. And then when I simplify that, I'll have that radical of 5, which I can add to that one over here, right? Because I'll have, I'll have this term and then this and this are now similar. So, and then the last one we are going to change to the square root of four times the square root of five. Again, you factor it out so that it works out so that you can hopefully get the same radical on all of them. And now I do. All right, so it's just a matter of let's simplify each of these first. And then you're gonna have three times, and the square root of nine is three times the square root of five minus, and then this gives me two times the square root of five. So if I finish this, three times three is nine minus two times square root of five. So you should hopefully be able to see, and this is the kind of thing that I'd like to, the number sense I'd like to see you guys start thinking about is you've got a positive two times the square root of five over here, and you've got a negative two times the square root of five over here. They cancel. All right, and then, so no adding necessary on this one. You just get 9 times the square root of 5, and you're good to go. All right, I'm going to stop the video there, and then we will pick up at problem 9 for the third video. Thanks.